and welcome to another episode of A Four Times in a Podcast. You join us on Monday the 28th of March. It is just less than a week until Celtic take to the Glasgow Derby again. It's going to be a massive week for Celtic. It's probably a pivotal game in the title race and so we just wanted to bring you a few episodes this week rather than the, the one weekly episodes. Myself, Darren, and I'm here with... Danny and Andy today. Just before we get started, I'll just give a shout out to our sponsors for this episode, Football Prizes. As you know, we've been working with them again and they've gave away some great Celtic prizes over the last few weeks. You've had Joseph Juranovic signed shirt, Jota signed shirt, and then last week we gave away a full squad signed shirt. Well, as we've returned with Football Prizes, here's one for you to win this week. It is the man that's just returned to the Celtic team, David Turnbull. It is a signed and framed Celtic shirt signed by David Turnbull. The name and number on the back is professionally framed as well and it's just it's excellent and you can win that for the cost of £3.95 that's how much the tickets cost for this competition there's only 99 tickets available at the time of recording over a quarter of them have already been sold so I get yourself involved in that you can use your code which is 4 times 10 so that's the letters for 4 times and then the number 10 and that will get you 10% off your tickets and You'll be supporting our podcast and giving yourself a chance to win this great prize. But I thanks again to the guys at Football Prizes and good luck to you if you do enter. Let us know if you win. We've already had somebody who won the Josip Juranovic shirt. He get in contact with us. He loves it. So I be best of luck to you. Right, let's get straight into it. Danny, as I said, we are we're hoping to do a few episodes this week just because of the sort of magnitude of how important this game is. So I'll just get started. How are you feeling and how, how big a game is this going to be for Celtic? It's a huge game. It's, you know, they're all big these games, aren't they? And going there in April, top of the league by three points, it's, it's absolutely massive. But I think having said that, it's a lot bigger for them and we can use that to our advantage as well. But obviously it's always height. These games always get heightened up when there's a two-week break between them and they fit in between for us to enjoy. So massive, massive week ahead and you know one that we hope ultimately ends in smiles on Sunday afternoon for us. But damn, I'm absolutely buzzing about it. I think last week and the last talk of Scotland and you know these pointless friendlies that they're playing this week and obviously as World Cup qualifiers going on as well which is a wee bit more important but just after the Ross County game as we've said on here it was a kind of perfect afternoon it was a perfect performance for what was needed in them and then we very we very nearly very nearly about five points clear the, the next day so since then you've just been kind of wanting to get the game on them and play them and by you know we, as you say, we're planning on doing a lot of content this week because it's such a big game and I think a couple of other of the, the boys at Day Podcast in the last season that they've they're kinda of following following that kinda of same path as well. So it should be a good week for content, but I think it just means everybody's absolutely buzzing and wants to the best way to kinda of get over their the nerves is to talk about it and you know, that's why we're on the night, but Oh, it should be it should be a massive week for for everybody. I definitely I think as as you say, there's a lot of great content creators from sort of Celtic side the new and you know guys sort of pals at Gig Pod and that and the likes there are making great content this week. There. So I think it does sort of feed into as you say, you're that nervous about the game. The best thing to do is just to sort of you know, well, when we are, we are coming on to talk about it, but I'm sure myself and you as will be listening and watching other Celtic stuff as well, just to sort of get yourself in the mood for it. But Andy, I'll come to you. How are you feeling about it? It's less than a week now. I am. I'm looking forward to it. It's similar, similar to Danny. It's a huge game. It's obviously a lot of riding on it, but I've got to agree. There's, I would say, the more so there's the, the pressure's more so on them. I mean, there's obviously they're the home team, but the sort of home records in these games speak for themselves, but. I think with the fact that even if they win the game, our goal difference, but we've spoken about a million and one times, is, is having on our, on our point. So while it's not something I really think about, but losing, I don't think we'll lose the game. Obviously, we'll come on predictions and things, but it's it, it's just sort of that extra cushion, if you like, that no matter what happens, we're really going to come out of that game top of the league, which is, is always a positive. And the players will be obviously acutely aware of that as well, but it's, it's huge. It's probably one of the the biggest games between us for, for a while in terms of what it will mean for the league getting the standings and it's I'm, I'm just looking forward to it and even the way we're playing at the minute playing really good stuff again I'll obviously talk about I guess your guys like Tumble's back in amongst the team there's been obviously Kyogo rumours about him maybe being fit enough to get on the bench or something and just the way we're playing like Jack Mack is scoring goals my aid is obviously coming on to a game and sort of looking at home in the team Yota obviously had a good performance the other day and it's good to have like, a sort of bulk to squad. There's a selection headache, if you like, because there's obviously a lot of players staking a claim and 
players coming back. It's it's a good problem we have, and it's I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Done. I think there's got to be absolutely shite myself with the morning and all of it, and obviously there's a lot of sort of pre-match chitters and pre-match rituals to get run, but I'm I'm looking forward to it, and I'm I'm confident in the team and confident in the manager that w- that we will get it right. I I think it's an absolute massive game. I, I know pressure is completely on them because we we're going into the game with a big advantage in terms of three points plus the much superior goal difference, so it's that's almost like an extra point. I know it could be eradicated, but with what's left the season, I would be very confident that we'll finish the season with better goal difference, so it is, in my eyes anyway, essentially an extra point that we can sort of count on. I think it's it's a massive game, I'm sure. The, the way, like, You're never going to get into this game looking for anything less than a win, but I think that as much as it's a must-win for Liam, the incentive we've got to go there and play our game and sort of try and get a win like we did in January or start of February, it's just so big and you would then be left with what, six games left and to be six points clear at that point where the goal difference, as I mentioned, would be staggering lead in terms of being able to almost put one hand on the trophy and look, you've seen, I've seen Celtic lose titles in spectacular ways, so I would, I've never say it was completely over until it was mathematically impossible but it, it would just give us a massive factor but Danny I'll come to you I just want to sort of look back at the last time we played them and how much in effect you think that will have like I know the game's all set at Ibrox so we're not going to have the rotten Celtic atmosphere that we had that night although there will be 700 Celtic fans in attendance like which there wasn't in August of course but what effect do you think that will have on the games like I'm looking at it in a couple of ways in terms of just how well we did play and how much we blew them away the first half, but also in terms of, I feel that there's less pressure on Celtic this time because when you went into that game in February, there was obviously that stigma around Celtic about how we hadn't beat them in two years, so how much pressure has that sort of lifted off Celtic in terms of like being expected to win or no having won in the last few, but being the team that did win the last one, is that going to give an added advantage? I don't, I don't think so. I... I don't. I don't think so. I don't. I don't want to say there's no pressure on Celtic. Of course there is, and the team will be putting a lot of pressure on themselves, and Andrew will be putting a lot of pressure on the players. And but there's only really, as you say, you don't count your chickens. And if we were to win, it wouldn't. Why not? It wouldn't clinch the league for us. But no, by a long way, we'd still need to go and do the rest of the, our job. But there's only really one result that points towards. You know, there's only really one result that would make a material shift in the league, and that is a Celtic victory. If worst was to come to worst, we're still tired of the league, and we still get a game to put it right at Celtic Park. And if we draw, it's it's a better result for us because this is really because if, if you if you look at it the way the way the crowds are right, and I know we've went to Ibrox and won with seven hundred, and they've came to Park and won with seven hundred. But if they were, we'd still have a chance to put it right. If they were to draw, if well, both of us were to draw, obviously on Sunday, then that would be no their last chance because obviously they'd still be coming to Parkhead, but it's 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 their version of us going to Livingston, where they think it's an automatic Celtic defeat. They that that's their kind of banker out the window. They've got us at Ibrox and they've not been able to beat us psychologically. That would do a lot to destroy them as much as it would do a lot to build Celtic up. So it's kind of must not lose for Celtic. It's not a must win for, for Celtic. It's it's obviously why I beat them. Don't get me wrong. Don't get in, in twisted. We we need to, we need to go there and beat them from for in my opinion. But if you look at it as a as, as the league as the points, it's you know nothing. There's no you know there's no crisis at Celtic if we get beat. We're still top of the league. We've still got a healthy should still have a healthy goal advantage. And you know we've got a chance to put it right at Celtic Park. And the atmosphere at Parkhead in February was, was incredible and it would just be ramped up even more if we were going in there. The level on points or, or whatever. And, but I don't, think it, I don't think the performance in February gives us any advantage because it, it would give the players belief, but I think you need to take into the fact that they were really, really bad that night and they completely capitulated within within about 30 seconds of that game. They did, I think the crowd got at them. I don't think they wanted any partner. And they're, you know, and, and maybe it's a simple way of looking at it, but their fans, instead of just admitting that we blew them away, their fans are just adamant that it was a crowd and that they're going to do the same to us on Sunday because of the crowd. But in two weeks or three weeks after that, when we play them again, they'll be making out that they're good enough to come and beat us, despite what they've said over the last you know, two or three games, but I think players can take confidence for it and I don't think they would expect Rangers to, to capitulate like that again. I think we're good enough to make it happen, I think we're good enough to score a couple of early goals, but if you ask me, I think they're just thinking next game at a time, the only thing that's that's good for us, it's 
bigging up my confidence now is we've really found that we've had a groove again. We kind of dropped off after the Rangers' performance. No, no dramatically, no as much as what other people would like us to admit. You know, the way people were going on is if we drew or lost every game since the Rangers game because we drew at Hibs, we've been rubbish for months apparently. But there was a wee bit of a drop off. We were grinding out results more instead of having games settled. Um, but we found that kind of groove again the last couple of weeks, really. Livingston at the United um, and uh, obviously at home at Ross County were really, really good. And um, we've kind of found that groove again we're, and we're going into it. And the two week breaks probably helped them, although uh, reports are saying that Ramsey and Morelos are injured out. Fully expect Morelos to play. I think this is them trying to get in in some mind games. I fully expect Morelos to play, but. Maybe, maybe the, the, maybe the international break might come to say like's helping the end and make a few of their so-called better players doubts. But it's got to be. I just expect it to be a, a really good game. But I think eh, a kind of scrappy game as well. Sorry, the good in terms of I think we win. But I think they'll they'll try and make it scrappy for us because I think and I think even they would not admit it that even the first game at Ibrox we passed them off the park in the first half. And really, they made that a scrap, but they started setting it off and got their goal, and then we chased the rest of the game. Say, like, we're never in danger, but we know we'll be at least a point in September. And then at Park Heed, or sorry, August, when that game got played, and then at Park Heed, we complete and utterly blew them away. And they should fear that again at, at Ibrox on Sunday. They should fear us turning up and playing more game. And I think they'll try and make it scrappy like they did in the second half. I know it's a different manager and all that, but it's basically the same team. And I think they'll try and make it scrappy. For the, for the onset and try and frustrate us but I think this team's a wee bit well no a wee bit it's a, it's a lot more street wise than it was at the start of the season and it's a lot better footballing wise there's a lot better players there players that were there have got better experiences throughout the season and we've added in some reinforcements so all going well we should win but I don't know I don't think February gives us an advantage over them I just think it maybe it gives the players a wee bit more confidence but they'll be fully aware of the task that they've got I, I don't know what I... I know I posed the question, but I sort of think it might be as a slight advantage in in terms of just how how the players like Rio Hattati obviously start a show that night. He, how these guys will have benefited from playing in one of the games. I know like professional football players, they should be ready to play in any sort of atmosphere. I know it's going to be as much as it was electric for them at Celtic Park, it's going to be as hostile against them on Sunday. But I think as well, and just something you mentioned about sort of fear that Rangers might have in terms of the way we did totally destroy them in the first half in the February game. I reckon there's, always, there's the chance that if we do score early in the first half or get a second goal at any point, they might. I, I just wonder if their head would go again and they would just think, oh shit, this is happening again. Like I know some parts of the media and a lot of Rangers fans tried to rewrite history and uh, apparently bossed us in the second half of that game despite the fact that Celtic were just sort of sitting back in the second half with a 3-0 lead ready to just sort of just invited Rangers to break them down apart from one sort of pop shot from Ryan Jack that hit the bar I don't think they really did trouble us that much but I think that I, f- I think we can take a lot from it. Look, it might be, Rangers might feel that they've got a point to prove in terms of the way they played that night. They might, I don't know if that fires them up more for it, but they, they obviously will feel that they owe their fans a performance after the way they did get battered that night. But I reckon, I reckon the confidence Celtic should take from it could stand us in good stead. Andy, since that game in February, we'll look at how both teams have played. They, both teams have dropped points in the league, but the one aspect that unfortunately we can't deny is that Rangers have performed better in Europe. They've beat Borussia Dortmund and the Red Star Belgrade while well, we went out to Bodo. Like, how do you see that having an effect? Like, will, will Rangers be more confident in terms of seeing that they beat these sort of teams? And, like, I know, obviously, I think most people would accept Dortmund. Like, on their day, are a better team than Celtic. I know they're missing a few players, but in terms of how Rangers have responded since that game, do you think that, that they'll come into this game with added confidence? Or do you think that there will be sort of any lingering doubts in the back of their mind in terms of what happened in February? I don't know, you would often think that they might I mean, have even done it sort of under Gerard when they performed well in Europe and still just didn't have it in the league. Um, it's a weird one when it comes to them, but again, I think they're more suited the way they go about and the way they sort of play with pace in the break is more suited to European football. To be honest, I think that's where a lot of the success comes from, particularly again with games where it's, they're not really expected to win or they're expected to be in for a sort of hard time, so there's, there's no that pressure on them, whereas I think in a game like us it's no the same, although the, the players might try and go about it the same way that Celtic will probably have men in the ball so they can try and play in the break, I think it's a, which differs is that they are 
against obviously the media and then the sort of the madness before it, but their fans won't wouldn't really accept that either. They they see it very much from an art point of view. So I think that's probably what plays a factor. Um, but I would be surprised if it if it played if it played too much a part. To be honest with you, I mean we have got every right to sort of believe in ourselves and. Like, Danny makes a good point. Like the performance really was, it sort of left no question marks about the ability in our team, and we're, we're only stronger now. There's sort of, there's only sort of more depth to the squad, more time with the manager working with them. Even though a, lot, a few boys are away on national duty, that's he's obviously had time where he spent with them, um, with the boys who were on their way and who were at home, and more time to implement his ideas. Like I don't think the whole European thing will play as much a factor as a lot. Probably a lot of them will want you to believe, and a lot of journalists will want you to believe. I think um, it's it's really. Good when it comes down to who can handle the, the pressure as well of playing, playing a big game like that and playing it domestically in, in the league. I think a, a lot of it will be down to that, but I don't know. I, I don't think it will have as much a factor as sort of their fans or, or certain people would have you believe. Danny, what about you? Do you think the European sort of their success and their failure will have any sort of effect on it? I, I, I sort of wonder, as as Andy mentioned, the Rangers sort of eh, have had a success in Europe in terms of breaking on teams like could the way Celtic play sort of benefit Rangers in that way when we go out? Um, I don't know I mean they seem to be getting results in, in Europe and listen I know I've, I've a broken record for going about wanting to turn the luck they get but they, they make fair fucking they make full use of their luck so fair play to them and you know they're in the quarterfinals the European trophy they've got a great chance on paper anyway judging that the last couple of years that they could beat Braga again and go through a European semi-final but um, as, as much as that pays me to say I don't know I, I, I think to me I don't know what it is it seems to be with the last couple of years I think there's a different and for all the Celtic dads you're going to like this one I think there's a different range that plays in Europe and the one that plays in the league they, they seem to I don't know it's as if they only really listen to the manager when they're playing in Europe it's it, so so weird they sat back against like Aberdeen and Ross County and Celtic and they lost what was it seven goals in three games or something and uh, it was like why is he sitting back? Why is he sitting back? And then when they were playing Dortmund, they put Lundstrom at centre half at the start of the second half of the Dortmund game. I think Dortmund were two man up or something. And uh, I thought he's fu- I thought he'd fucked it. And before you know it, they equalised and they can see the game out easily. And you think, right, how's it? Work? No, and then he will try it at the weekend and it'll no work. Um, so I don't know. I just think that they're. I think it's probably a, a mindset thing it's probably a mentality thing maybe some of the players are trying to put themselves in the short window and they think the best way to do it is to play well in Europe which it probably is but I don't I don't think they've played anywhere near as well um, as they have even even uh, last year when they, when they won the league at the park I, I thought they, they played better than Europe than they did in the league and I think that's been since Gerrard's come in that seems to have been the issue um, for them um, and for under Van Bronckhorst it's no different I mean because if they'd have played I, can, I mean I know in the first day night in Red Star they should have get put out I mean Red Star should have hammered them but I think you know no, no let me to quote XG but I think Dam is about our five Red Star finished that game with so they should have they should have been they should have been out probably um, but uh, the way they play you see I don't know if it's the way they want to play sets them up I think maybe they're more naturally a counter attacking team um, and then in the league they don't really get away with that they need to come out and beat teams so they struggle um, but I don't I don't see that that helping them I don't I don't see Celtic doing that because for, for a kick after the crowd don't accept them sitting half Celtic even even if they were to counter attack to good effect and it was working if if, if they were not in each say they were not in each right after 20 minutes, but they've cut us open twice with counter attacks, but have no capitalised. Their fans would still be raging that they're no kicking everything that moves, or they're no pressing it high up the park because you know they 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 value their things a lot more than us about you know playing for the jersey and all that and that shit running about kicking folk. They seem to love all that, so the the only way they can applicate them is by scoring. So um, I just think they probably they probably prefer to play a counter attack, but I don't know if that'll work against us. I don't one. I don't think we throw as many men forward as is what people think. Um, I know we like to get the wingers forward and the fullbacks as well, but I think we see we seem to actually be. I mean, somebody might quote me and this might be wrong, but I, I don't think we've lost many goals with the counter attack. I think we seem to lose them for set pieces. So I think we'll be fine. I think we we'll. Uh, I don't. I think I just think we we use the ball well enough and. I think I, I think we'll use it well on Sunday. Um, it could, but I, I just I don't know. I, they'd need, I, I just don't see them produce. I, I'm not saying I don't see them beating us because you know that's stupid, but I don't see them producing that kind of European performance because I don't think I just don't. They've not done. They've not done it yet in the league this season. So I don't know why. Very unlikely that they would do now. I was just thinking about, but 
And uh, we'll come on to look at how we think Celtic might line up. Now, obviously, since the last time we went to Ibrox, the team's going to be significantly different in terms of... You've got, well, well, let's go through the line-up that day. Like, the defence isn't too different. She had Joe Hart in goal, Tony Ralston at right-back, Stephen Welsh at centre-half, Carol Sarfield there as well. Juranovic made his debut at left-back. But it was from like middle to front was pretty different. Obviously, Tumble's just back from injury. Uh, he started that day. Cal McGregor, he's yeah, ever present. And Ryan Christie was in the midfield as well. Obviously, he's off at Bournemouth now. Edward was up top. He's off at Crystal Palace. And out left, we started with Kyogo. And out right was Leo Abada. Obviously, Abada's been on the bench the last few games. And Kyogo's still like, there's a question mark about his fitness. So we'll, we'll look at how we might line up. I think we'll not waste too much time on the keep on the defence. I think everybody sort of accepts it. It's very likely it will be Joe Hart. Uh, Joseph Juranovic, Starfield, Carter Vickers and Greg Taylor. I know a lot of people might fancy Anthony Ralston playing uh, in this type of game, but I think that it's been 90% certain that if there's no injuries, that will be a uh, defence. So well, how do you see Celtic line up? As I say, we'll try and stick to sort of midfield to attacks. I think that's really where the only question marks are. How do you see Celtic lining up this Sunday? Yeah, I mean, I think the... To be honest, I, I reckon it's going to be pretty much the same team that played Ross County with the exception of Rogic who came out for, uh, for Matt O'Reilly. I think that will really be... I would be surprised if that's not a line-up. Um, as I said, I reckon the sort of Kyogo Ace is up the sleeve and I, I do think he will be on the bench and it will be a massive boost to the team. Uh, just, just to have him there. Um, I mean, in an ideal world, we, we don't even need to use him and he can be... He can get 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 the time as mere rest, but I, I think it will be it will be that team or as close to that that team that played Ross County as possible. Again, I think it would only even be one change for the team that played Dundee United. I think that the only change I can think it would be Forest for you there. But I do I reckon Jack Marcus as long as he comes back. I know he never started the game. He started the last game for Greece, but he's no started the one they're playing the new against Montenegro. He didn't start, so an ideal world he doesn't even come off the bench. He comes up the road. Um, I reckon it's him. Even if Kyogo was fit, I think it would be a hard time to drop him. Matt, how do you justify dropping a striker that's scoring goals and scoring goals for fun at this point? Um, he's obviously netted two hat trick one against Ross County, one against Dundee, and then he scored a double against Dundee United. So he's he's obviously in amongst the goals now. Look, looks like a different player for the guy that we seen miss the penalty against Livingston. He's a handful, gets him saying it's all. So one touch finishes, it's game a chance and he'll bury it. Uh, again, similar with Maeda, and it's it's harsh on Abada, who's obviously he's listening. He's got a lot of goals and a lot of assists this season, but um, I think Maeda's offering a lot, particularly wide. Um, he's he's sort of came into that role quite well, and I think he's effective in behind. And you're more likely to get more space in behind the team like Rangers than you're playing anybody else in the league because Danny Spawn is probably where a lot of their the difference in their performances come for when they play at Europe. Because if, if they could translate their European form to the league, the, the most effective place you would see that would, would be playing us at Parkhead. Because they could sit in and just counter us, but their, their fans, it's the one game they won't they won't stand for that. They want to see us try and match us and try and match the way they play. And I think that's probably why they don't get that success, um, because they won't want to play like that. So you're merely like you get, get space and get time and buzzed behind. Um to put Tavernier up against Maeda, I think he's, he's going to get joy out of that. And again, Yota is somebody who's sort of, isn't he playing poorly, but he, he wasn't the same player that we, we'd we seen um, for a short while. But then I thought against Ross County, he looked really good again. So he's obviously, he's one of the players you feel like he'd be due a big big performance against them. So I'd, I'd, I'd like to see him out right. And that would be my front three. Um, and, and I think the options that that then gives you is a bad off the bench. I think I do have the feeling that Kyogo will be on the bench. He's another option that you get. Um, and again, I don't know whether or not Forrest is going to be back, but he's, he's probably going to be the third guy that you would look to, to change the front three. Um, in the middle of the park, I think McGregor's obviously always going to be there. Atati seems to have sort of made that position next to him his own, really, I think. And if Andrew's looking at his strongest team, I think, he'd, I think he does trust Atati quite a bit in that role. And to be honest, I would agree with it. I think any time he's been after the ball, it just look sort of tiredness to me and a guy that's played a lot of games, but he showed you the value in the, in the first, the last game against Rangers that he's got. But I think the only sort of other position I know it was coming to you, Darn, with the question about it, it was um, obviously Froggy Chisney playing who comes in there. And I, I, I think it'll be natural that O'Reilly would go in. I think he's he offers a lot and he's quite intelligent. He's pressing after the ball while being obviously quality on it. But you were talking about maybe bringing Tumble in. Do you have a fancy for that? Hey, I, I 
look, I'm not the biggest David Turnbull fan. I've criticised him quite often eh, on here, but I, I think he, you really did see what Celtic were missing when he was at the team eh, with his injury. And I just think that every time Ange spoke about him, that he spoke very highly of him. He seems to be somebody who is very invested in the manager and he eh, seems keen on learning. And I was also like, I know, look, I'm probably reading too much in this, but obviously Tumble's one of the ones that isn't away in international duty. So if he's been at Lennox Town, it's probably gave Ange a bit more time on the eh, to see Tumble back in the training field. And obviously he did come on in that game against Ross County. So I just wouldn't be surprised to see Tumble sort of slot back in there. Like, eh, I, f- I think, as you say, I think Katati and McGregor are pretty much nailed on eh, and it is going to be one other. I know Although you look at games like Pataudry and Livingston, like Ange's sort of look to guys like Beaton and that. So I mean, if he brings one of them in, then I wouldn't be very, I wouldn't be my choice. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised just in terms of like the types of game that seems to have done it this season. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see. I really do like Matt O'Reilly, so if he's there, I'll be delighted. And I, I think that's really been the story of transfer window was sort of bolster in the midfield to front and with guys like Hitati and Adeguchi and Matt O'Reilly, like you've really got options now. Uh, I, I'm going to be controversial like and go, I, I think the front three, I, I, I actually do think that bad will be on the bench and I, I agree with what you say, Andy, I think it's a bit harsh because his numbers, his, like his goals and assists, they've been incredible this season for somebody his age and not even his age, just in terms of any player would be delighted with the return that they've had, especially in his first season for Celtic, but I reckon that Jota is going to be there and I reckon my, uh, Dyson Maida will be at left and I, I agree with what you say. I think he'll be well suited to running in behind and I, I think he's been actually really good the last few weeks. I know he was coming in for some criticism but he's been excellent in my uh, my book like the last few weeks and I, this is where I'll, I'll probably divide opinions. I know the three of you disagreed with me when I said it in the chat. I, I reckon if Keogh goes back to plays, I reckon it's just, I, I love Jack and Marcus. I've bigged him up for a few weeks. Uh, now, so pretty much since he's come back, I've been delighted with his return. But for me, Keogh goes head, head and shoulders above uh, anybody in the league and I reckon if Keogh goes fit, then uh, I would throw him in and I wouldn't be surprised if Ange did. I know uh, it was the Leverkusen game in the Europa League that he brought Kyogo and uh, Cal McGregor straight back and then obviously Kyogo then got injured in the best game and it looked like he was going to be it but he was brought straight back for the cup final and won his cup final and I know he then went on to get injured in the St Johnson game we've not seen him since but I just reckon that if Ange is happy and the medical team are happy and Kyogo's ready to go I, I think it would just it, he would be my choice and I know a lot of people would like to maybe see him on the bench and bring him on with 20 minutes half an hour to go if we need him but I, I just think he's been a massive miss to this team and like, it's great that guys like Jack and Marcus and uh, Maeda have really filled that hole that's been missing in terms of but I just reckon Kyogo just gives a different dimension to our play and as I say I reckon he's the best player on Oh, uh, yeah. Well, no, no. Most well, certainly for me, he is the best player in the league, and uh, if we can get him back, I think it will only boost our chances of winning on Sunday. But Danny, I know you didn't agree with me when we were speaking off air. Uh, what's your lineup, and who is there any sort of changes you'd make? Um, no, I, I think the back four speaks for itself. Um, sorry, back five. If you take heart, um, I'd go. I'd, I'd see. I liked your idea of Turnbull being at training and and seeing working on him every day. I just I still think it goes O'Reilly, Hattati and McGregor. Um although it I wouldn't be shocked Beaton came in and played instead of O'Reilly. And it was Beaton, McGregor and Hattati, that wouldn't shock me. But I'd like to see the three that played in the midfield against them. I thought O'Reilly was outstanding that game and I would like to see him play again. Um, I think he's got a personality to go to Ibrox and put on a good performance as well. Um I've no fears about him uh, like folding or anything like that or capitulating. Um and up front I would go again. I, I know I, I've just said I'd play really because of what happened in the last game but I would and I'm going to drop a badder but I would play Jota on the right because I thought he was outstanding against Ross County. I thought it was his best performance and uh, up there we won his best performances in a sale of jersey. It was his best performance in a long time. Um, I thought he was brilliant and I would play Maeda because he's, he's got all the, the pace in the world and he, he's, he's a very, very intelligent football player with his pace. And Jackie Marcus will just bully them. He will just bully their two centre halves off the park. And hopefully, um, I don't think I don't think he'll go be involved, but I, I, I did say I think he'll start the semi final. Um, but hopefully, if it all goes well, you've got Jackie Marcus doing what he did in the last game, and then you, you bring on um, Abada 
in the second half, who can who can really because he can play a badder is one of the players he can play through the middle. He's proved that he can play out wide. You can bring him on. He can reap the rewards of Jackie Marcus's work. Um, as I say, I don't. I, I think the team fairly. I think the team fairly picks itself. I think the only. I don't think. I think Tumble will be on the bench. Um, I, I think. I think the only real kind of headache for Ange might be O'Reilly or. Uh, beat on or Hatati or beat on. I think it might be they they get beat on and he's he's come in a few times and done well. He's also had a few shockers this season, so I don't really know. But that would be I would go O'Reilly and I would go Jack the Marcus up front. I just think he, he, there was something different about our performance in, in February, and it wasn't just the fact that we stuck free by him. It was with a focal point up front that bullied their two centre halves against us because in previous games against them we've had Edward up there and Edward was a fantastic player for us. You never I'll never bad mouth Edward. I thought he gave us three really, really good years or four really good years um as a Celtic player. And even last year when people were saying he was rotten, he still banged in our twenty goals, he was still a top goal scorer by a mile. Um and he's you know, I think he's a great he's a great Celtic player. Um he didn't get that physical presence. He was a big boy, but he didn't get that presence off him. And looking at the goals that we lost against him last year a few times and just the way the general games went, he had Goldson and Holanda strolling out for the back, going fair, you know, taking their team thirty, thirty five yards up the park. Um we need challenge and now you've got Jackie Marcus in there who, let's be honest, they just planted the two of them. Uh, I know I don't know it wasn't Hollander that played us, it was Bassey, but they just planted their two centre halves basically on the eighteen yard line and said, Right, I'm playing here, you two are playing here and they had no answer for it. The first half we pressed them off the park and that all started with Jackie Mark and in the second half, um, you know, when the game we were well up at that point and the game was done, you know, Jackie Mark is still you know, they still, the two centre half still couldn't get it. So, to me, you just do that again on Sunday and you just say to Jackie Marcus, right, you know, go and bully them again. And he seems, Jackie Marcus seems to be the, the type of player that's better for us either in a away, a away from home setting or a kind of game where we might need to kind of stay in it. And I think that um, he, he I, I just think he's perfect for Sunday. I think his performance against them, the park he was outstanding. He, he fully deserved a goal. He was unlucky not to get one. And I just think that that, it kind of takes away a lot of their game. I mean, the team you know, it stops Goldson getting out, it stops Bassey getting out, it stops them getting 34 years out, it stops Goldson can't play that long diagonal so so often that they seem to have a lot of joy with because he's got Jackie Marcus up his ass. So I think you go with Jackie Marcus, yeah, if Gio goes fit, you put him on the bench and then you let him come on with 25, 20, 20, 25 minutes to go and, you know, I would probably keep Jackie Marcus on and if Keogh go up with him um, if the game's not going the way that we want it to go or we're looking for a goal um, and then if uh, Keogh go running off Jackie Marcus I think the two of them are, could play up front together um, so that would be my team but um, I, don't, I, I don't know Dan I don't know about you I just I don't think there's too many decisions to make I think there's maybe one or two in the midfield but I, I, I don't think Keogh will be fat I, I think I was sort of speaking out of hope more than anything about Kyogo because I just love him and I'm desperate to see him back. Maybe it will be a few weeks, uh, as you say, maybe it will be the semi-final. It's his time to shine. But I, I, I do think the front three is pretty settled in as much as it is probably going to be harsh on uh, Leal Abada. I think it, it does look like it will be Jack and Marcus Maeda and uh, Jota. But the midfield is the one, as I say, I think Beton is probably the wild card that could get thrown in there. Just as I say, he's done it at Pataudry, he's done it at uh, Fur Park. He done at McDermott Park and uh, even at Levy the other week, so it does seem to be the type of game that Ange likes to use him. But I, I think I the team is much more settled uh, now. And look, if there's a few changes, the the thing is we've got a bit of strength and depth now, so I'm sure Ange will uh, make a right team. And I know he, he spoke after the game at Ibrox in August about his regret about no starting Keogh will through the middle, but hopefully he doesn't come out with any regrets after this Sunday. But I think we'll wrap this episode up. It's uh, been just over 35 40 minutes, so we've got a load of content coming. So don't worry, we will be back later in this week. We'll take tentative predictions, I'll call them tentative because obviously some players are still away in international duty, things might change in the build up. So keep listening to hear our uh, cemented pred- predictions towards the end of the week. I'll give you Tony's obviously not in this episode, he's he's on in the boozer to be honest right now, having a Monday club. So, right, uh, if, you he, to, if you want to know how his Monday club's going, he's predicted an Edward Hartley. 
<laughs> Fine, I'll Edward Hattrick. Uh, no, he has he has said that it'll be 2-0 to Celtic and he's given Dyson Maida and Matt O'Reilly the goals, which sort of gives you a look at who he thinks will be starting the game. Uh, I'll, I'll go next. I, I think Celtic will win the game 3-1. I think we'll be too strong for Rangers and I think that we'll just prove too good and it could be a pivotal day in terms of this season. And do you know what? I, as much as I, I hope he'll go there, I think Jackie Marcus is, he was unlucky not to get a goal and get three or four saved on uh, the game in February so I think he will get on the score sheet I know he's had back-to-back hat-tricks at Celtic Park maybe he'll get one uh, away from home on Sunday there you go that's my prediction uh, Jack and Marcus hat-trick in Celtic 3-1 Andy what you going for? As I say this this will probably change I mean I'd say daily but probably early to be honest with you by the time we kick off but right now I'll say 2-0 and I reckon Jack and Marcus and Josip Juranovic are the scorers and Danny um, I'm just shocked you're on the same Monday club as Tony and he's, you, he, he can't come on yet, you, you can come on. Um, I, I, I think it'll be, I think it'll be 3-1 to Celtic, I think Jack Marcus will score this time, Jota will score um, because it's now fate and, um, and Carter Vickers will keep her in the third, um, no, no, Starfield. He's due a goal and uh, it's going to come and I, I think they'll they'll get a penalty. But um, I three man sale to get another. Well, there you go. That's positive start for the week in terms of predictions. And so look, as I say, there's going to be lots more content. We are looking for you to get involved. There's a couple of ways you can do that. We're going to fire up an Instagram story where you can just drop your questions there and it files them all nicely for us to go through. So check us out on Instagram at Four Times Podcast. Just search that and you'll find us. Uh, if you're not part of the Instagram uh, party, then you can either tweet us at Pod Tims, uh, leave us a comment on Facebook at Four Times a Podcast, uh, on YouTube if you're watching on here, just leave a wee comment and let us know what you're thinking about it, and you want to ask us about uh, Sunday's game or just in general about Celtic, then I let us know and I we will be back at some point this week, so keep an eye on where you get your podcast from and you'll sure to be, see, be seeing some more content from us this week, but I will speak to you later in the week. Cheers. Uh-huh.